started here. So, welcome to the first webinar of 2020. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be here with you all to talk about Tai Chi. I'm so glad we had a huge interest in this webinar. We had over 550 people signed up for this webinar. So I'm, that encourages me because I know that I, I'm passionate about Tai Chi and I wanna bring the, the benefits of Tai Chi to as many people as possible. So I appreciate you taking the time today to be a part of this webinar. And my name is Diane Bailey. I am the creator of the Open the Door to Tai Chi system. And I list all of these uh, things about myself for a couple different reasons. Yes, I've been in the martial arts for a very, very long time. Um, I am also the owner of the conditioning classroom. We started the conditioning classroom in 2002. So I've been a personal trainer for a very long time as well. We focus on the mature adults here at the conditioning classroom. The reason that this is important to you is to give you confidence that I really do understand you and I understand where, what your interest is and that I have the background to be talking about Tai Chi. I really have a unique perspective in that I have, I'm fully a martial artist and fully a personal trainer. So I have that unique perspective to be able to talk about bringing Tai Chi to everyone. There's so much interest in Tai Chi. You know that it's, it's in the news, it's in uh, magazine articles. There's, there's all kinds of interest in Tai Chi. I have people coming into my studio here that I say, why are you interested in Tai Chi? And they say, well, because my doctor told me to, or you know, my best friend has done it for years and, and I'm having trouble with my balance right now and, and they said I should do this. Uh, sometimes they come in and they just say, you know, I read an article about it and I'm curious. So you may be curious as well. You may have looked up Tai Chi and you may have seen something like this, not exactly this screen, but you may have thought, what is Tai Chi? What? And if you get this picture in your head, it may be very intimidating. It, it may be something like, yeah, okay, wait, I, I don't look like this guy. I don't wanna look, look like this guy. I don't wanna be a martial artist. Tai Chi just really isn't for me. And that's what I wanna combat today, is I do want to give you that confidence that it doesn't have to be this, it does, you don't have to look like this, and you don't have to become a martial artist in order to enjoy the benefits of Tai Chi. So that's what we're gonna do today, is talk about those four cornerstones, which are really the basis of the Open the Door to Tai Chi system. We're gonna learn a little bit about Tai Chi. We're actually gonna do some Tai Chi. So I hope you're not driving. I hope that you have a space in your office where you can actually stand up and do, because that's an important piece of what I want you to experience today. I want you to understand why Tai Chi is important so that I can move you from being intimidated by this martial art and move you to being empowered to try it. So the first thing, what is Tai Chi? If you've been around me for any length of time, you've seen this definition. Tai Chi is a martial art. And that's what stops people a lot of times right there. They get intimidated right off the bat, but I don't want you to be. Tai Chi is a martial art that utilizes gentle flowing movements to enhance health in the body and the mind. There's purpose behind those gentle flowing movements and that's to enhance health in the body and the mind. We'll go back to talking about the martial art piece um, but you know if you look at it from a traditional point of view of 
traditional Tai Chi training. Martial artists will make you feel like you must learn Tai Chi from someone who has a lineage back to the people who started Tai Chi. You must become this uh, dedicated martial artist and accept the whole Taoist philosophy. And you certainly can't teach it unless you've done it for years and years and years. And, and what this traditional viewpoint has done is it's really made this very tight, small group of instructors. Because if you were to follow this, it does seem impossible to become a Tai Chi instructor. I wanna break through that and just eliminate that line of thought, which is why I started Open the Door to Tai Chi. Because remember, I'm fully a martial artist, fully a personal trainer. And I want you to realize that Tai Chi is an exercise we can move into the 20th century. We don't have to be uh, back in the day of where you actually have to travel to the master to learn from them. These are what the cornerstones are all about, to encourage you to move you into that empowered place where you can start to implement Tai Chi. So let's move to those cornerstones. Cornerstone number one, perfection is not the goal. Improving lives through the benefits of Tai Chi is the goal. Perfection is not the goal. And if you were to take a traditional Tai Chi class, which I have done, it, it really feels like that's the focus. Perfection is the focus. You have to perfect this one move before you can move on to the next. And to me, that's a disservice to the people who can really benefit from it because Tai Chi is not the focus. It's the people. It's improving our clients' lives, improving our own lives with the benefits of Tai Chi. Those benefits are numerous. You, again, if you've been around me any length of time, you know that usually in these webinars, I give you a whole list of the studies that prove these benefits. And there are thousands and thousands and thousands of studies, scientific studies that prove these benefits. If you want a list, just email me. I will be glad to share some of my research into Tai Chi, share that list with you. But in general, if you look at the benefits of Tai Chi, it's proven to improve balance and flexibility, which reduces falls in older adults. It's proven to reduce anxiety and depression, to improve sleep quality, proven to lower blood pressure, and increase energy, agility, and feeling overall feelings of well-being. If you were to take all of these benefits and put them into a pill, that, that pill would be a bestseller, right? Because these are things that people are looking for in our society. We need to bring the benefits of Tai Chi to our communities. The focus is not Tai Chi. The focus is the benefits, how people can benefit from Tai Chi. So therefore, perfection in the movements is not the goal. And in fact, that leads me into cornerstone number two, the underlying principles and not simply the movements of Tai Chi drive those benefits. It's not simply doing Tai Chi. It's not doing those gentle, slow moving movements that give you those benefits of reduced anxiety, of improving your balance and your flexibility. You have to apply and understand and apply the underlying principles. It's 
part of learning, like we said, you can't just learn movements or, or just pick up Tai Chi from the internet and then go in and teach. You actually have to understand these basic principles, but they're not hard to learn. These principles, which we're going to, I want to just briefly go through right here, and then we are going to stand up and we're going to do. See, I told you you didn't get to sit for very long. We have columns in Tai Chi. We have rotation is actually very important. Substantial and insubstantial. That's the idea of empty and full, full and empty. Substantial is full, it's insubstantial is empty. Moving from the Dantian, and I'll explain what the Dantian is. Understanding the flow of energy in your body through the circular movements of Tai Chi, being rooted and grounded. The idea of relaxation and connectedness is very, very important along with the breathing and the martial arts application. It is a martial art. You can't separate Tai Chi from its martial arts roots. Understanding why you're doing what you're doing is a very important piece of that puzzle. So this is where I want you to actually stand up. I'm gonna stand up and move back. And uh, let me stop the sharing of the screen so that I'm on the big screen there. So I know you can't see my feet and I apologize for that, but if you stand up, and the first thing I want you to think about is columns. There's one column straight down the center of your body. There's one through each shoulder, through each hip. And we wanna keep those columns intact. So if, you're, if you were to just shift your weight over to one side, bring that foot next to that foot, and then shift, and I want you to think about that weight coming all the way over onto that outside column and all the way over onto the outside column. When we shift, we're not shifting and sticking our hip out like this, st sticking our hip out, that breaks those columns. This weight shift is also what that substantial and insubstantial is all about. Understanding empty and full is an important part of Tai Chi and how you move and how you improve your balance. So if you are to shift over all that weight, making this side completely substantial, make this side insubstantial. Now that that leg is insubstantial, try to lift. Good, then take it to the other side, bring it out to that outside column, let this leg become completely insubstantial, and lift. Now you guys know you're in a place where you understand your own body, you know you own your own knees, you own your own hips. If this is painful, you know you're not to do it. If you're in a place where it's dangerous, where you might lose your balance, you know not to be doing this. But if in you're in a place where you are in a safe environment and you want to try this, I want you to experience how learning to bring all that weight, keeping that column straight, making this side completely substantial, makes that leg really light because now it's insubstantial, it's empty. Try it one more time, bring it out to the other side, let this leg become completely insubstantial before you try to lift it. So that's part of our problem and that's part of what Tai Chi does is it does slow us down. We, we wanna shift like this and, it, and, and we start to do this and we're not, we're, using, uh, we're not using the right principles of balance when we do that. I also wanna talk about moving from the Dantian. The Dantian is two inches in from the belly button, two inches down. It's the center of your energy. It's also the center of your balance. So if you have your feet about shoulder width apart, I want you to just step slightly forward with one foot. Now it's not a long stance, it's not a lunge, and you're not in a tandem stance either. I know you can't see my feet, but my feet are not right in front of each other. That's a very unbalanced position. 
feet are about shoulder width apart as if you're on a railroad track. Just step that one foot just a little bit forward. Okay, this should feel fairly balanced. I'm going to talk about rooted and grounded in just a second, but I want to talk about moving from the Dantian first. If you bring your hands to the level of that Dantian, now bend that front knee just a little bit and let your arms float up and out. And then as you come back, as you bring your weight backwards, bend that back knee just a little bit and then come forward and then come back. I'm going to turn to the side just a little bit, pushing chi. And you can see that I'm keeping my columns intact because I'm moving from my Dantian. If I were to think about my hands, which is, is actually very common, this is what people do. And you can see I've just broken my columns and it's a really bad position to be in. I'm going to fall. It's also a bad position for a martial arts application. Like I said, this move is called pushing chi. If you were to push on something, which is the martial arts application of this movement, you're pushing your opponent away, coming up and pushing them away. You would want to be rooted and grounded. If, as you're doing your pushing chi, you're lifting that back heel, and I know you can't see that back heel, but try lifting that back heel, you're not as stable, right? You're not rooted and grounded. So you need to keep, lower that center of gravity just a little bit and keep those heels on the ground. That's part of that martial arts application. That's part of being rooted and grounded. Bring the other foot forward now. We can do pushing chi on the other side. And I want you to take a nice deep breath in as you pull back and breathe out as you push away. Breathing in as you come towards your body. Breathing out as you push away. One more, breathing in and breathing out. The breathing and the martial arts applications also apply to each other. If I were to push someone away from me, I would not be breathing in as I push, right? I would not go, <gasps> that would be silly. If you try to push on a car, you're not gonna breathe in as you push, you're gonna breathe out as you push. The breathing is also part of the mechanism where Tai Chi helps you tap into that parasympathetic system, that restful state, which is really where your body should be most of the time. I did an entire webinar just on how Tai Chi helps you with your stress and brings you into that parasympathetic system. Which by the way, if you want to see any of the other webinars that we've done, they're all on our uh, YouTube channel, Open the Door to Tai Chi. So one other uh, part, one of the other principles is rotation. Now, rotation in a martial arts application is power. Rotation is extremely important in power. If I were to punch just like this with no rotation, it's actually a very weak punch. If I get my hips into this motion and punch, it's much stronger. There's a movement called wave hands like clouds. So you're gonna take this hand, and I know I'm mirror, mirroring you right now. So this should be your left hand if you're looking at the screen. You're gonna take that left hand and you're gonna draw a counterclockwise circle. Notice that my hand is not going too high. And now I want you to start moving from the Dantian and start drawing that circle from your Dantian and just allow that arm to kind of float in that circle. Good, now bring this other hand, which should be your right hand, and you're gonna do a clockwise circle, moving from the Dantian, allowing your body to relax into this motion. 
Good, now you get to put it together. You're gonna to start with this left hand. As it comes down, your right hand comes across and wave hands like clouds. You wanna think about your belly button is a flashlight and you're moving from a 45 degree angle to another 45 degree angle as you're doing this wave hands like clouds. And isn't this an interesting, it's very, very calming. And one of my students calls this movement hypnotic, which I think is interesting. But there's actually a lot of power in this motion. With this, I can break somebody's elbow. Obviously, I increased the speed as well, but it's a very powerful motion because we're using that rotation. So you can have a seat now. And I hope you enjoyed feeling the actual uh, principles. You can take those principles and you can, you can take substantial and insubstantial. You can take columns and you can take moving from the Dantian. You can take that tomorrow to your clients and they will improve their balance like that. So I want you to actually try that. That's why I wanted you to experience it. Remember that Tai Chi is about our clients. Tai Chi is not about Tai Chi. It's about helping our clients, helping ourselves be better balanced and better, uh, more relaxed, able to tap into that parasympathetic system. So I'm going to go back to the slideshow now. Remember, this is where we had, we were learning about those basic principles. And I'm so glad you had the opportunity to learn and experience those. The actual principles and learning these principles, the importance of it is to translate to everyday life. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where we are focused as trainers. We don't teach people exercises so that they learn the exercises. We teach it so that they can do what they love to do and they can continue to do it and feel better doing it. It's the same thing with Tai Chi. We teach Tai Chi not to be dedicated to Tai Chi. We teach it so that they can do the things they love to do. They can become better golfers. Their blood pressure can be lowered. Maybe they can get off their blood pressure medication even. They just want to feel better and be able to do the things they love to do. This is why we do Tai Chi. So cornerstone, cornerstone number three, Tai Chi should be accessible and approachable to everyone. This is really the basis of why I created Open the Door. We're not focused on being martial artists. You do not have to be a martial artist. You do not have to uh, dedicate your life to Tai Chi. You don't have to dedicate, you don't have to accept the Taoist philosophy. When we're teaching Tai Chi, we're teaching it as an exercise focused on helping people. And I wish everyone could come to my studio. And you know, the Functional Aging Summit is in June this year, and it's in Denver. So if you do want to sign up for the Functional Aging Summit, please come and you'll actually be able to come see my studio. I would love to meet you all, believe me. It is an accessible exercise. It's not, not, it is an accessible exercise, not inaccessible. It's very accessible to all ages and abilities. It's uh, amazing to me, some of the people that come in and say, you know, I, I, I'm very uncomfortable doing other exercises. You know, my hips hurt, my knees hurt, or I'm just not used to moving. Tai Chi is a wonderful place for those people to start. 
there's no equipment. You can do Tai Chi wherever you want to do it. You don't, it, just a big open space. You can do it outside, you can do it inside. And it really is easy to learn. I hope you felt that as you were doing some of the Tai Chi because that's part of that mystique, that mystery of, oh, it's, it's too hard to learn. I, I can't do that. But it's not. You just learned a lot of the movements in the form. And it, it, that was 10 minutes time. Yes, it takes time to actually learn to apply the principles, to learn the flow of the form, but it's not difficult. And it really does translate to real life. That's what we were talking about just a minute ago. I have a client, Kathy. She has really severe scoliosis. Um, she struggles with her balance. She's 73. And because of Tai Chi, and she told me the other day, they were at the theater, and not, not the movie theater, but the theater like where, I don't know if they were seeing Hamilton or Wicked, but big uh, theater where the stairs going down to their seats, there are no railings. And she said, I would never, I, I always had to hang on to somebody before. And she goes, because I've been doing Tai Chi, now I have confidence in walking down those stairs with, I, I didn't worry about falling. That's what I mean about teaching Tai Chi. It's not a dedication to Tai Chi, it's a dedication to our people. I have another client who said, you know, it's improved his golf game tremendously. Uh, I had a client, Robin, who went on a sailing trip around the bottom of South America and she said that she felt extremely balanced in that ship because of Tai Chi, because understanding her substantial and insubstantial. So those are the kind of stories that I, I love to tell because it's, it's not just for the classroom. It really does move out into their real life. And cornerstone number four, Tai Chi is a piece of the overall fitness puzzle for the mature population. I will never tell you that Tai Chi is the only exercise that you will ever need. That's not true at all. It's a piece of the overall fitness puzzle and an important piece. And we need to have it because we need to balance our harder side of exercise with a softer side of exercise. You know, the fitness community is, especially right now, is Let's go hard, 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 fast, faster, harder. The new things coming out are, are more intense, more intense. Well, if you do that all the time, your body will break down. Your body is not meant to do that. It needs to be in balance. You need that softer side of exercise. And Tai Chi is a wonderful form. It's great for flexibility. It's also great for brain training. Um, I, we can do whole webinars on brain training. And in fact, our next webinar with Denise Medved will be about Tai Chi and brain training. But the, the, the point here is that Tai Chi provides a different form of movement, different form of exercise, so that the body can be stronger, that it's not just being broken down all the time. There are people out there and they come into my studio all the time that Tai Chi is really the place for them to start. And it's a great introduction to exercise because it is so gentle, because it is gentle on their joints. It's not a hard, fast system. Um, sometimes these people just they're afraid of exercise because they've never done it. Tai Chi, again, is accessible, and these people need Tai Chi. Like I just said, we have clients who need to balance their exercise. Maybe they are able to do the harder forms, and they are used to exercising. Tai Chi is a great cross-training tool. And believe me, doctors and physical therapists 
are recommending Tai Chi and people are looking for classes. The thing that I get asked a lot is, you know, I thought I, I, I needed to study, I needed to do Tai Chi for years and years, and, and I just, I don't feel comfortable if I haven't done it for years, um, standing in front of somebody and teaching. Well, again, this is why I created Open the Door, and I want to ask you, do you need to be a professional race car driver to get into your car and drive to the store? No. Do you need to be Michael Phelps to teach a swim class? <laughs> no, you don't. Do you need to be a doctor in physics to teach a high school science class, to be able to open those students' minds to the wonders of science? No, you don't. You don't have to be a master to teach Tai Chi. You can learn it, learn how to apply the underlying principles and open the door to Tai Chi for those students. You know, go back to the swimming example. If you were a swim instructor, you know, how many of your students would go on and be Olympians? Probably not very many, right? Most of your students will just be grateful that you taught them how to swim. And it's the same thing with Tai Chi. Most of your people are just going to be grateful for the opportunity to learn Tai Chi. Maybe a small percentage of them will take off in Tai Chi and they really will want to travel to China and learn from a master and learn the fan form and learn the weapons forms. That's awesome because you opened the door to that wonderful world for them. You do not have to be that master. We need people to open the door and be those teachers on the ground. You really can learn Tai Chi. And part of the fun of learning Tai Chi is it brings those benefits to yourself. We have instructors all over the world, literally, and we have a Facebook group that is a community of instructors. So even as you're learning, we're here for you. You're not out there by yourself. We support each other in our teaching. We support each other in our own practice of Tai Chi. You don't have to become an instructor, but if you want, if you're thinking, yes, I really want to do that, the certification course is very simple to follow. It's all online. It teaches you the history of Tai Chi, teaches you the individual movements, teaches you the flow of the form. And then it also teaches you more about those underlying principles. I gave you some of the, the importance of those principles and you got to experience it. But learning how to teach and incorporate those principles is important. And I do actually help you with coming up with class plans. I give you class plans so that you're not frustrated with how to start. Think about all the people in your community that could really benefit from Tai Chi if you were able to open the door for them. And if you want to just try a little bit, take a little bit of, uh, you know, dip your toe in the water and try the daily series or try Tai Chi, the daily series is the place for you to start. It's three different videos that are focused on balance, focused on stress relief, focused on a morning routine. And you'll learn a little bit of Tai Chi in those, and you will learn those underlying principles as well. That's an important piece, even if you're just learning some Tai Chi for yourself. So I, I really want to encourage you, I hope that it's taken away some of the fear of Tai Chi some of the mystery, it is a wonderful form of exercise. I do have some questions already. I know that there are some questions from people. Uh, 
I told you I had a lady from Australia, um, Sylvianne, she's in Brisbane, and she sent in a question ahead of time. And uh, her question was, Diane, I work with seniors, and for balance, they need abdominal and glute strength, which I'm not gonna argue with that. She goes, what Tai Chi movements do you recommend for that? Um, Sylvianne, what I want you to think about is more in terms, yes, they need strength to be balanced, but if you're teaching those underlying principles, that's really more of what they need. You need to not think of muscles so much, but think of movements. Think of how the movement, um, functional movement is gonna help them be balanced. Being able to walk and understanding where their substantial is and where their insubstantial is, that's gonna keep them more balanced than having really strong glute muscles, okay? so. If you have questions, I want you to go ahead and write them down, send them in. Um, I am a, running the whole thing right here. So if you have questions, um, go ahead and write them down and I'll get to them. Marie also sent in a question ahead of time. <laughs> she said she's teaching some Tai Chi classes at a uh, club and she goes, younger members think Tai Chi is only for older adults and older members think it's too hard to learn. <laughs> well, Marie, I, I hope this has helped you understand that perfection is not the goal. It's not hard to learn. That's part of why we set up open the door with beginning classes so that people are uh, together with other beginners and they're not as intimidated. They're not walking into a class where everybody knows everything. They can take it piece by piece. They're not expected to perfect it right away. That's not the goal. The goal is to help them get those benefits. And again, with the younger members, it is a hard sell. That, that's true. Um, even in China, the young Chinese, are they're like, oh, that's for old people. <laughs> but if you think of it as a good cross-training tool, it really is for everybody. I mean, what athlete doesn't need to be more balanced, right? So Tai Chi can be a great cross-training tool. A um, couple other questions came in ahead of time. Edward asked, how long does the course take to complete? Well, everybody learns at a different speed, Edward. Everybody learns that they have different learning styles. So the course has, is completely self-paced. There is no time limit on it. You can take the time that you need to practice and do those movements yourself and find, find that comfort zone. So that's why I did it as completely self-paced. Like I said, it is online, but you have the opportunity to do the distinction where you have uh, the, we can Skype with me and I can see your movements and you can ask me questions how to, how to improve. So there's a couple more questions coming in. Um, Elizabeth, she said she teaches fitness at a retirement community and always provide a chair for support if needed, even for the more functional resident. Can they really learn Tai Chi if you are always needing a chair for support? Yes, Elizabeth, that's uh, it's a great question. My husband teaches at a um, retirement community, a CCRC here in Denver, and he always provides the chair. And he, when he first started teaching there, he said it was funny, the, the residents would come in and they, they would hang on to their walkers. Where now they walk in, they might still have their walker, but they put their walker to the side and they have the chair in front of them if they need it. So it's there for even for um, emotional, mental support. But most of these uh, residents are doing the Tai Chi without having to use the chair. Now, if you have someone that is 
not able to stand, is not able to, maybe they really do, they, maybe they are confined to a wheelchair. There are seated modifications. And we go through those seated modifications on the Facebook page. We can help you teach those people um, how we can show you those modifications so that you can have a chair option as well. Let's see, Lisa, I'm a private personal trainer that trains clients in the privacy of their own home. Finding a place to practice with a group has been challenging. Any recommendations or advice on where to begin group? Um, Lisa, you can, you can do one-on-one -on -one training. Um, you, I do private lessons in Tai Chi. Um, finding a place to actually do group, uh, you might check out local rec centers. You might check out churches. They might be interested in um, using some of their open space for a class. Um, community centers, there, there are lots of options. Uh, you might even approach a, a studio like mine that they might want to add Tai Chi to their uh, programming and you would be the ready to go teacher for them. So those, those are the kind of things that you, you might want to do. Um, let's see. Joe, hey Joe, how are you? Good to see you. Good, well, good to hear from you. I don't really see you. Um, and and yes, Joe is saying in in response to Sylvianne's question about balance and strengthening quads, you know, the lower stances, you know, as you get to doing more and more Tai Chi and the lower you go, yes, the more strength you're going to get. Um, and Joe, you're asking about, please review breathing during movement a bit, bit more. Um, breathing is a whole section of learning in the certification course because it is such an important piece of Tai Chi. Your breathing needs to be slow and full. It needs to be a 360 breathing where you're not just breathing from here, but you're breathing from up and down, side to side, and front to back. You're breathing in such a way that it's a relaxed kind of breathing. So your inhalation might be up to about 75 to 80% of your capacity, but not more. Then learning how to slowly exhale is also very important and also very challenging for people. But just learning to breathe like that is an amazing gift that you can give to your clients because a lot of people are such shallow breathers. Let's see now if I have a couple more questions. Let's see. We have some time here. Um, What is the CEC requirement and updating policy for open door to Tai Chi? Um, the, you do get CECs from doing the course. You also, um, because we have that membership group, which provides all kinds of continuing education through that group, that is your recertification, that membership. And that membership is only $99 a year so you don't have to um, gather other CEC requirements um, to maintain your membership. Um, my, my husband actually said, why don't I show them how to hold onto the chair in front of them? So I'll stand up again and I'll move back just a little bit. Here, let's see if I can stop that chair. There you go. And you, the, this is my chair here. They might do their wave hands like clouds. They may take a few steps, and if they need to, they can have that chair right there. If they're doing their leg lifts and they don't feel comfortable lifting without holding on, that's totally fine. Remember, too, that Tai Chi is very modifiable. 
You don't have to lift your leg like this. You don't have to kick like that. Your foot can be on the ground just as long as this leg is substantial. If this leg is insubstantial, that can be a kick. So remember that modifying is part of that perfection is not the goal. Um, that's, that's where we differ. We're not doing it for Tai Chi's sake. We're doing it for the benefit of these people. Let me see if I can get a couple more questions. We have some time here. Ah. I knew one had come in and I'd forgotten to do this one. Melanie asks, are people really interested in the martial arts application and are they really that important to learn? Yes, they really are important to learn and yes, they really, people are very happy when they learn those martial arts applications. Um, it's not making them martial artists. We don't make them spar. We don't make them do it on each other. That's not the point. But understanding why you're doing what you're doing is, uh, it helps you visualize and it helps you learn better. It's just another level of learning. If I were to stand up again, and there's a movement called brush knee that it is like this brush across and um, have the other hand out. Okay, so from a martial arts application, what I'm doing is I'm blocking something low and I'm hitting something at the same time. That helps people understand what they're doing when they're doing this brush knee. It helps them stay within their columns helps them understand why they need to be moving from the Dantian, because if they do this, now they're in a bad position, right? They need to keep those columns upright. They need to keep themselves moving from the Dantian. They need to keep themselves rooted and grounded because you're coming against an opponent like that. Understanding those martial arts application, you'd be surprised at some of the sweetest old ladies that they look so quiet and and withdrawn and they really get into oh i didn't know that's what that was for that's awesome <laughs> so yes and and you do learn all of that in the certification course because i am a martial artist i want to give you that knowledge then you can pass that those examples on to your clients as well let's see if we have any other questions Ah, from Linda, does Tai Chi reinforce good posture? Absolutely. Um, we talk a lot about our columns. That's a postural event. We talk about being suspended from the ceiling, allowing everything to fall naturally into alignment. We talk about um, moving from the Dantian, not moving from the shoulders. Let me stand up again. And we also talk about keeping our eyes on the horizon. A lot of our posture today is like this, right? Because we're looking at our phones as we're walking, or you have an older person who wants to step and, and make sure that they're not stepping in something or stepping on something, right? But that actually, if their head is down, that's where they're going is they're going to fall. So we talk about keeping your eyes on the horizon, keeping those columns intact and moving from the Dantian. That kind of relaxed posture is what we want. We even talked today in class about not being military straight, raising that chest. That it makes breathing harder, that's not a good posture for you to be in. It's actually really bad for you to be pulling down like this. You can see the tension in my neck. That's not a relaxed posture. So yes, Tai Chi does absolutely reinforce a good posture. And Betty, she says, will this be repeated anytime soon? <laughs> yes, it will. It will um, 
It we're going to send out a replay to everyone who registered. And um, it, all of our webinars, if you're interested in learning more about Tai Chi, all of our webinars are on the Open the Door to Tai Chi YouTube channel. And it is that full phrase, Open the Door to Tai Chi. I hope that I've given you some confidence, taken away some of the mystery of Tai Chi. Again, the certification teach you all, teaches you all about the history. Hope it's empowered you to think about adding Tai Chi to your own workout routine. And if you're interested in the daily series or in the certification, we have a webinar special. It's webinar 25, all capital letters, no spaces. That gives you 25% off. So if you want to go ahead and get started, remember it's completely self-paced. There is no time limit on the course. And you have lifetime access to it, so you can always refer back to it. So if you are interested, we have for this webinar, webinar 25, you get 25% off. If questions come up uh, after we say goodbye in just a couple minutes here, please email me. My email is diane at taichisystem.com. I do answer all the emails. And if you really want to sit and talk with me, I would be glad to do that as well. We can schedule a phone consultation. I'm available because I want you to understand that it's not about the Tai Chi really. It's about bringing the benefits to you and to your clients. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you for um, taking this, this little bit of time in your world to kind of investigate Tai Chi. Let me know if you have questions and I hope you'll join us for the next webinar. Like I said, we'll be with Denise Medved talking about brain training and Tai Chi. We'll see you later.